Actually, it is dark now. But I'm hoping the GoPro can help me out here. The Ronin is honestly astonishing in the city. It's so easy to ride. Literally no effort at all. The brakes are great. ABS at both ends works well. All of the torque is at the bottom end. Which makes creeping along in traffic like this an absolute breeze. You really don't need to use the throttle here. Again, this really nice decoration is here because of the G20 summit that happened here last month. I hope they keep it. I'm, I'm a fan of this. It looks nice. Cruising at high gears at low speeds is also super duper easy. Bro, what is wrong with this guy? Okay, let's see how low fifth gear can go. 30, 32. And we're still trudging along very comfortably. No problems at all. See, we're still in fifth and we are going smooth. No knocking, nothing at all. 24. Yeah, 24. Okay, 23 is when you get knocking. But still pretty good. I'd like to show you how it is when I open the taps. Because we've talked a lot about how it is in the city and we've established that it's fantastic. It's dark, shit! But this gives me an opportunity to talk about the headlight which is phenomenal. Look at the high beam. Look at that throw. It's mad. Honestly, this is all the light most people are gonna need. Much better than those stupid aftermarket night eyes you get. They're absolutely shit, man. My favorite superbike showroom in Pune, Triumph BU Bhandari. The Ronin can go reasonably fast. But you also sense that it's not something it's very happy doing. The vibrations creep in in the tank, especially here. You can really feel them through your legs. And the noise goes from that satisfying rumble to that just very generic motorcycle engine sound which isn't particularly pleasant to hear. The suspension is great though. It's great. Compared to its direct rival, the Royal Enfield Hunter, this one is leaps and bounds ahead. The Hunter is such a bad rider, especially from, from the rear springs. Ronin absolutely demolishes it in that department. And it picks up speed pretty much from any gear you want. Also, because the distance between the wheels is not a lot like a typical cruiser, it's a very flickable motorcycle as well. I just wish it had road tires. Now, I can't demonstrate what I'm saying right now because I'm in 7 o'clock traffic in Pune. So, you're just gonna have to take my word for that. For quick overtakes in the city, this does not disappoint. With all the torque coming in low, again, I did not see that speed breaker. Shit. You can just zip past quickly and get enough pickup to do what you need. This may look like a cross between a scrambler and a cruiser, but the posture is proper cruiser. Your feet sit ahead. You sit upright. And the seat is nicely cushioned and grippy as well. Let's open the taps again, shall we? Because of the sheer volume of the vibrations, by volume I mean like amount of vibrations, not like audio while volume. Because of the volume of vibrations at speeds like 80 or 85 like we just hit right now, it feels like you're going a lot faster than you actually are. Because ideally on a 225cc bike, those vibrations should be coming in much later. That is the Ronin's biggest drawback, its ability, or lack of ability rather, to hold high speeds. I would not be happy on the highway if I was going for like a long ride 
was doing a Pune Mumbai stint, which is something I do with like moderate frequency, I would say. I would not take this bike. Now it's fulfilling my dad's needs. He doesn't really go out of the city. But I'd have my pulsar over this any day because of my priorities. The Bluetooth I haven't really used yet. My dad keeps telling me, set it up when you get time, set it up when you get time. Truth be told, me and my dad, both of us, couldn't care less about the Bluetooth features. It's a gimmick. And it shouldn't be a priority or even a consideration while buying a bike, in my opinion. We didn't buy the Ronin for any of those features. We got it because it's comfortable, it's easy to ride in the city and it's great for pillions. Also the ride, how could I forget the ride? Also, I'm not riding in high beam to be deliberately annoying to everybody else. I'm just doing it because it's dark and it can, I can just see more of what's ahead of me in the camera footage. Let's quickly talk about what TVS calls GTT, Glide Through Technology. Now, in my opinion, this is just a fancy word for the fact that the bike has a lot of low down torque and you can use the first three gears without any accelerator input. You can actually do the fourth and the fifth as well if the road conditions favor it, but I'm just going to show you what that looks like. First gear, you can just go along, look. I'm doing this on the side of the road so I don't annoy anybody. Look. First gear, no accelerator input. Let's go into second. No accelerator input again. Let's do third. This is actually quite a useful feature. Again, TVS has marketed it very nicely, but what it is, is low down torque, which is being delivered in a very nice way. So TVS Ronin, should you buy it? Well, you can, and I'll tell you what sort of demographic you need to fit into for this bike to make sense for you. And I'll also tell you what sort of demographic you fit in if you should stay away from this bike. First of all, let's get one category right out of the way. If you're a person who likes to do highway riding, who likes to commute between cities frequently, stay away. Stay away from the Ronin because you will need more highway performance. A large subset of people will stay away from the Ronin because they don't like the looks. It's understandable, looks is a very important part of getting a bike. Personally, I think the Hunter looks much better than the Ronin. The Ronin looks striking, yes. Is it outright attractive? Is That is debatable. I think there's attractive elements on it. I think it could have been put together in a more proportionate fashion. I don't think it's bad looking, but I wouldn't say it's beautiful either. Striking, yes. From some angles, it does actually look very good. If your primary commute is in the city, and a city is where you sort of, is where all your riding, all your miles happen, if that's the city, and you don't mind a lower fuel economy than other bikes which are only designed to do the city to run, then you can consider this. The thing is, most people, only want to do city riding you will be just as happy with a 125 or 150 cc bike and plus you'll get a much higher fuel economy but the Ronin is more fun it's a bit of a mixed bag this I won't lie I like the bike okay okay quick opportunity to show you that on rough roads, holy shit, this dust is mad. Oh my god. Okay, it's highway time now. I'll just finish the verdict on the highway, I guess. So if you want a powerful bike, is like especially and exclusively for city use, very weird demographic, I know, but then the run-in will make sense for you. And if you want a comfortable pillion seat, that is something this bike does very well. Great ride quality, absorbs most of the bumps that are thrown at it. To summarize in a slightly better way, the pros of this bike. City use, ride quality, 
पिलियन कंफर्ट फीचर्स इफ दैट मैटर्स टू यू लो डाउन पावर एंड टॉक अ नाइस एग्जॉस्ट नोट ऑल्सो लो डाउन वॉट द हेक अरे काय करतो आहे ब्लडी इडियट ऑल्सो सुपर लाईट क्लच विच इज अ स्लिप क्लच इज वेल वर्क अमेझिंग आय थिंक आय फॉर गॉट टू मेन्शन दॅट बट डाऊन शिफ्टिंग इज जस्ट सो इन्क्रेडिबली स्मूथ लुक इथ दिस आय एम नॉट रेव मॅचिंग ॲट ऑल अँड नो जर्क्स ॲट ऑल सच अ नाईस युनिट कॉन्स टॉप अँड परफॉर्मन्स रिअली डिसअपॉइंटिंग polarizing looks i'm going to say i would have said that a 5 speed transmission is a drawback 6 would have been better but in this case the lack of power at the top basically means that 5 gears is still more than enough and you're not getting much performance out of the fifth anyways in short it's a marvelous city bike it does everything well within the city everything you need for an easy city ride this bike does terrifically but once you pick up your speed once you go out of the city things start to go a little bit wrong so if city is what matters to you go and test ride the ron in and see for yourself i really hope this review was useful it's been a while since i did a review subscribe if you enjoyed the content i'll get more gopro vlogs hopefully soon give me a thumbs up let me know down in the comments what do you think of the ron in what do you think of this video and ride safe